city on a hill, surrender to your will, your glory on display, your glory on display. Come on, sing awesome. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place, worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. Come on and praise him. Oh, you will be praised. You love a force of grace, consuming every space. It's uncontainable. You're coming like a flood. Our hearts are filling up. All things are possible. All things are possible. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Come on, do you believe that tonight? Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. Come on and praise him. You will be praised. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus.
As we've separated ourselves for 21 days, consecrated our life, each and every family and their family represented here. Lord, I thank you, God, that we're under the window and the umbrella of the blessing of God, and we're never going to be the same again because of what you're speaking in, our, in this house. What you're speaking in this house is coming to their house. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that the blessing of God is going to rest upon them and their family and transform us forever. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in advance. Before anything, we believe you, we love you, we worship you, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you go greet your neighbor? Go say hello to somebody. We're glad you're in the house. Amen. Go shake somebody's hand you ever name ever for. Hallelujah.
Well, good evening, Relevant Church. Welcome and welcome home. We are so excited that you're here with us. Thank you for being here for Wednesday. Wisdom, if it's your first time worshiping with us, we wanted to extend another big welcome home. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have a special assignment for you, but don't worry, it's as easy as one, two, three. Step one, I'd love for you to find this Connect card. It's in a seat back pocket in front of you. It says the welcome home on the front, Connect card on the back. If you take a few moments, do step number two, which is to fill that out completely and neatly. When you're finished filling that out, you want to take it back to the Welcome Center for step number three, where it says welcome home, there you'll receive a free gift. So make sure you fill this out. And we are in 21 days of prayer and fasting. How many of you really want some french fries right now? I always ask that every year. I really want some donuts. It's okay. We're going to make it through together. Jesus is so excited that you're praying and fasting, so don't worry about it. It's going to be awesome. I just want to give you a quick reminder. Don't forget to grab your prayer request cards in the lobby. You can put them up on the crosses when you have those completed. Um, I also want to remind you we have a night of prayer and worship this coming Sunday at 6 p.m. We're going to get together corporately and seek the presence of God, which is so amazing. It's one of the best parts of the fast, so I really invite you guys to join us. We're going to have another one on the, the 20th as well. So we're going to have one this Sunday night, next Sunday. If you can't make it, we will stream it. So, but we'd love for you to be actually in the building. But if you can't, you have to work or whatever, you can watch it online. And I also want to let you know that we have a miracle service on January 25th. That's a Friday. Um, you know, when we're seeking and pressing God, we're going to kind of end that. Almost, we're not be totally done. So you can't like go eat donuts after it. I mean, you might want to, but <laughs> we'll end the fast on the 20th. 27th, but on the 25th, we're going to have a miracle service. It's going to be incredible, and we'd love for you to join us. So those are the things that are coming up. We're going to have some special things on Sunday, so just be looking for that. Maybe some opportunities to maybe win a Visa gift card, so just be ready for that on Sunday. So anyway, I'm Lo. These have been your weekly announcements, and as always, welcome home. Well, praise the Lord. Hey, listen. Hey, they're going to bring, hey, we're going to get, we're gonna, the anointing oil is coming too. I told them today, I said, I need jugs of oil. Amen. So they went and got jugs of oil, and we're, we really are. We're, gonna, we're not going to make a salad. So everybody calm down. You're not allowed to eat. Now you could eat. But um, we really are. We're going to get the anointing oil, and I'm going to leave it on the altar. And then when we're done, we'll, we'll figure out how if you want to take some home with you. You know what I mean? Because you never know. You know, I'm, I'm down with it. You know, you might want to bring some oil home and lay hands on the neighbors or something like that. Rub, rub it in, smear it in, get it on them. Amen. Amen. You know, praise the Lord. You ready to go? Everybody excited? I like it when you guys are in. You got all close. Did you get close enough? Or you got some second row seats? I got some front row seats over here now. Come on. Some of you be brave and move up to the front. Come on. Get in here. Amen. Let's get the word of God. I want you to go with me to Deuteronomy 26. Chapter 1, the text to give is up there. We're talking about giving. I want to start talking to you about your first fruit offering that we're going to be taking on the 27th. And as tonight as you get ready to give, I'm going to be talking every Sunday and I'm going to do a little bit more teaching on it because I believe in it. Amen. I believe that it's the expectation. Now, this is what you got to know. What is a first fruit? And I'm going to talk more Sunday, so come and learn. We take a first fruit offering on the 27th at the end of the fast. And why do we do that? Well, we do that because it's the expectation of the harvest for our year. Okay? Did you get that? And in Deuteronomy 26, verse 1, we're going to look at this. But everybody get what I'm saying? It's expectation of the harvest we're going to see in that year. So we're bringing the first fruit gift. It's beyond your tithe. It's beyond your offering. It's beyond. Amen? Yes. It might be a pledge. And it might be something like, might like, you know, be like something you say, well, man, God, you know, I can't do that right away. Don't worry about it. You pledge it. You give it. You take care of it. You do it. Now, let me explain something to you. I'm not asking you what. Some church, I've been in church before. You know, they said a week's this or that or a month's out. I, you do what God tells you to do. I trust enough that you hear from heaven. And if you do not want to participate, you don't have to. There's no pressure in here. You know that. But if there is something that you pray and hear God for your first fruit, I would bring it on the 27th. Now, let me explain to you why that's specifically important. It's important because this is what you've got to realize. It's my expectation of my harvest in 2019. I'm dictating my harvest with my seed. Okay? Now, I'm going to read it to you, and when you see it in the Word of God. Now, what you got to do is I'm trusting you enough to go home and pray. Now, let me explain something to you. God tells you to do something, you be obedient. And if you can't do it, I get it. I mean, look, God tells me stuff, and I'm like, God, I can't free that up 
I'm just being straight with you. I can't free that up like one shot. So what I do is I get ready to do a little bit, and I do a little bit more, and then by the end of the year, I get it. I'm telling you, the one year, I, God blew me out of the water. I said, that's some, that's some stuff. Okay. By March, it was all here. And you know what was funny? When money started hitting me, he said, that's, that's that seed. Okay? So I ask you to pray about it, all right? You pray about it, you bring it, and you bring it on the 27th, we're going to lay it. Now look at it. Now I want you to see this, okay? And it shall be when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it and dwellest therein. Now that sounds like the blessing, don't it? That's what we've been talking about. For thou shalt take the first fruit of all the fruit of thy earth. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Bring your first fruit. Bring your best seed. Which thou shalt bring... Of the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and put it in a basket, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, this place, their name there. Now watch three. I like this. I love this. And thou shalt go unto the priest that, what, shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I am coming to the country which the Lord sweared unto their father to give us, and watch this. And keep going. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it before the Lord in the altar of the Lord thy God. This is a supernatural seed. Now, what you got to understand is a supernatural seed that brings a return on your life. Okay? Now, you got to get faith for it. All right? Everybody say faith for it. And your faith for it releases the blessing. Now, this is what it comes down to. I'm going to talk more Sunday about it. It's, now, this is what it's about. It's the expectation of my harvest for 2019, but I'm bringing it to God first. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying, God, I'm bringing you, I'm bringing you a gift that you told me to give, whatever that is, but it's my expectation of a coming harvest. Now, I'm telling you what it'll do. It'll, 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 it'll kickstart it'll kick your financial position. Does it make sense? And you bring it and you leave it in the altar. And that's what we're going to do, leave it in the altar. So you pray about it. So here's the only thing I'm asking you. You pray about it. God, what are we doing? Are we first? Are we getting involved with first fruit? Amen, number one. I believe it because you're taking 21 days to consecrate yourself. Amen? You're taking 21 days to hear. And I believe this is the most important thing. He said what? He said take the first, the best first. See, God wants the best. So your best gift is the greatest gift. Now, how many, some of you have noticed, how many, some of you, I should, I should testify, have people testify, but people that participate, amen, years before, they seen the blessing of God break them open into another dimension. Now, how in the world does God do that? He does that by faith. Amen? So you got that? No pressure. You pray about it. Half the time, you know, you talk about it and you'll get it. Man, hey, that's our seed. And that's separate. It's an offering. Amen? Now, let me tell you, when you tithe, you keep the window open, but when you bring an offering, you bring your increase. Is that Okay. So you pray about it. You know, you talk about it. You know, and don't get, don't feel no pressure. It ain't about pressure. It's about obedience. Does that make sense? So if God tells you, hey, do this, you do it. And don't freak out. Because sometimes God will tell you, like, you know, if God tells you, like, sow a couple bucks, that ain't no problem. God says, sow some money. And right away, you go, oh, my God. You know what I did one year? And I'm just telling you. I said, all right, God, you told me to do this. When you bring it in, you'll get it. You know what he did? He brought every dime of it in and then some. I'll tell you the one year what happened, I got scared. Did I, I, I don't even want to tell you about that one. I said, man, that's a brick of money. What am I supposed to do with that? They said, well, that, here you go. I said, here you go what? What am I supposed to do with this? And the Lord said, that's your seed. I paid my vow unto the Lord. I'm telling you, listen to me, God wants to prosper you. See, prosperity has got to be taught. Once you teach it, they'll catch it because you can't now give God. You know what I'm saying? He'll give you favor. Favor is great. But I'm at, so you pray about it. Is that okay? There's no, there's no pressure. Please don't. I think everybody's like, oh, my God. Am I? No, you pray about it, and God tells you to do it, you do it. I don't care. If, if God told me, and you got to give $2 a week till you get it figured out, you just obey the Lord. That's what it's about. It's ain't about anything else but your breakthrough. Amen? But it's a first fruit gift, and I'll teach more about it. And the financial first fruit is the, it's, now, get, if you get one thing, know this. It's my, it's my expectation for the incoming harvest for the year. Does that sound good? That don't make no sense, don't it? do it? Bring me the best first. We didn't even start. God said, you would think, let me get it, then I'll give it to you. He said, no, 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 no. That ain't faith. You know what that means? He said, bring the best first. How can I bring a seed of expectation for what's coming It didn't even come yet? Well, you create the coming by your giving. Amen? You get in another dimension, you know what I'm saying? And then when you'll see it coming. When it rolls, you'll go, okay, that's that seed. Amen? But you know when tonight when you're giving, you just and you pray about it and you don't get no pressure and it'll teach you about finances, amen. You go in there and say, God, what are we giving? It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice unto the Lord. But he'll meet you. He'll meet you in that altar, man. And he'll he'll take care of you. He's always gonna take care of you. God will always take care of you. Amen. Hold your seed in your hand. You ready to give? 
Uh, I'm telling you what, I get excited about it, amen? And you're fasting and you're praying, and if you ain't fasting and praying, start now. Get in on it, amen? Praise the Lord. Hold your seat in your hand. The ushers are coming. Come on. Listen, hold your seat in your hand and get ready. Say this with me now. Say, Lord, I got the blessing on my life, so I got increase in my life. Thank you, Lord, for supernaturally increasing me in every area of my life. And, Lord, I claim what I need. Tell God right now what you need. You need 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. Tell God. God, God ain't, God's ear is big enough for your mouth. Tell God. Say, God, I need this stuff. Amen? He wants you to have the best tool shop there is, man. He does. God's a concern. With, I'm telling you, listen to me. God wants you to have the best stuff. He don't want you like, oh, you scrimping on by. Tell the Lord. That's the problem with the church. We don't talk enough. See, let me tell you, the word puts pressure on your tongue. Yes, it does. And people are scared to say stuff. They don't want to say it. They're scared in the face of something to say something. You say it. Tell God. Amen? You tell him. I'm believing. Amen? Go ahead. Tell the Lord. And then you say this out loud. Say this out loud. Say, devil, I break your power. Because that's what it is. He's trying to hinder your money. I break your power in Jesus' name. And then you loose the angels. Angels, thank you. You're ministering spirit. For me, I'm an heir of salvation. Go get my stuff. Bring it to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The ushers are going to say, you ever see that scripture? You know, people think I'm like, you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm giving you scriptural proof. This is the truth. Amen. This is the truth, ain't it? Praise be to God. You better believe it. It's the truth of the word of God. We're going to go somewhere, but before we go there, I want you to see this just real quick. You know, you know, angels are part of your blessing package? They are. And I'll do a series this year on angels. And people don't talk about this stuff. They get all, people get crazy with this stuff. They get off in left field, but you got an angelic presence, amen? You know what I'm saying? They're here to help you. Because you know what? I, I think you even need to know this. You're an heir of salvation. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. You doing good? You guys are doing great. Go to, go to Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse. Just real quick, I just want you to see this, because sometimes I teach you this stuff, and I want you to know why you're doing it, okay? Look at verse 13, okay? Hebrews 1, 13. You doing all right? You smiling? You ready to get it? You're going to get it. We're in the blessing. We ain't leaving. Amen? We ain't leaving. I'm going to brainwash you to the blessing. Now, listen to me. I've been in church a long time, but I didn't know it like I know it now. Because you got to, somebody asked me, how do you get it? You get it, it's contagious, but you have to, somebody has to have the capacity of it in them. And I got it, it got in me. Supernaturally, it got in me. And when it got in me, it got on me. And it's going to get on you. That's why, you know, but you don't despise it. That's the biggest problem with the church. They, 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 they walk away from stuff because they, ah, I don't know what you're talking about. No, don't get like that. You stay in it. Look what it says there. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies my footstool? Look what he says in verse 14. This is strong. It says here, it says, are they not all, he's talking about angels. He says, are they not all ministering spirits? Did you get that? Did you get that? We're in the blessing, amen. Are they not all what? Sent forth to do what? To minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Who's an heir of salvation? You are. So what are angels supposed to do? Your angel's sitting here, he's collecting dust. Put them to work. You know what I'm saying? Put them to work, man. Say, go do, go get me some stuff. Their angels are what? Ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs. They're sent forth to minister what? They are not all ministry spirits. What? They're what? Are they not all ministry spirits sent forth? He said angels are ministers sent forth to what? To work for them who are the heirs of salvation. So you got angels want, waiting for something to do. They're waiting on the sun. They protect you now. You ain't got one angel. Don't believe that nonsense. You got multitudes of angels. You know what I'm saying? And they, remember, Jacob had a vision up and down. They went on the ladder. Up and down, they went on the ladder. Who you think is, who you think is doing some stuff for God? You know, people got those little fat baby angels with little bow and arrow, like bink, bink, cupid. That's the goofiest junk i ever seen in my life. It's good for Valentine's Day, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Little fat angels with pinky thing, little naked fat baby angels. One of you got one of them goofy pictures. We had a goofy picture like that one night. They on fat. Remember that stupid angel thing? You don't remember that <laughs> plastic thing, whatever? Still, you didn't buy it. <laughs> stupid little baby. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble with somebody. I could care less. Take your little stupid fat baby angel thing down and understand angels are like nine foot tall, wheeling swords protecting you and taking care of you. Who wants a little fat baby angel showing up with a little binky bink bow and arrow? I don't want that kind of bow and arrow. I ain't going to do jack. 
You know what I'm saying? I need an angel with a sword or a spirit. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of you, protecting you. Amen. Being there for you. But put them on assignment. That's what you're saying. When you say angels go, that's what they're waiting for you. You're the heir of salvation. Now, you listen to me. Listen to me. The more you obey the word of God, more angels work on your behalf. Okay? You ever hear Brother Copeland? He says this. He goes, he goes your angels stop at 65. Because the speed limit and all that stuff, he's being serious. He's being serious about this. Now, what he means by that is this. They obey the law of God's word. You understand? Now, my angels stay with me because I'm driving faster than 65. Praise be to God. I can prove it to you. It's true. But you know what I'm saying. They obey the law of God. You can't be not living the law of God. And then you think the angels are going to go. Most people get in trouble because they undo what God's trying to do. It's the truth. When you hear this series I'm on, you ain't going to walk out of love. You know what I'm saying? You know why you don't get offended? Because I got to keep the blessing on me. I'm telling you, confession, you know why you ain't going to say what you want to say? You're going to say what? Because I got to keep this blessing on me. The whole thing's about it. And I know you think I'm brainwashed to it. I am. And you're going to brainwash you too before you get out of here. You're going to be so brainwashed by this blessing, you're going to be like, praise be to God. Is this the only series he's going to stay on? Yeah, till you get it. Because you got to, I'm telling you why. Because you got to get a revelation of this. Because you got to write this, write this down. We're going to get ready to go, okay? Now, I need you to get this now. You know we've been in these scriptures now. Don't be chasing these scriptures away. You write them all down. Psalm, 130, one, Psalm 133, verse 1, okay? And I want you to understand this. You need to get, now write this down. You need to get a superiority complex. Did you get that? A superiority complex. You don't be mean to people and you don't be belittling nobody, but you need to live a superior life. You're living beneath the blessing. We tolerate too much stuff as the church. Put up with this nonsense. There ain't no more putting up with this. I ain't doing it now. You didn't know. And you didn't know, you didn't know. But now you're getting to know. And when you know or knows, you're going to get in a different place of revelation because revelation is going to give you access. And you're going to be like, well, that, that's not part of the benefit package. The blessing package doesn't say that's in there, so I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. I know something. I'm going to get it to work. Amen. And what you're doing, you're getting a superiority complex. So let's look at Psalms 133, verse 1. you got to see this now. And when you see this, amen, you're going to pull this thing in. Amen? Pop that up there. So Psalm 133, verse 1 says this. It's really talking about you understanding that the blessing comes on your life. Is that all right? Now, you got to get this stuff and get, you got to pull it in. Because here's the biggest problem with this whole message if you ain't careful. you got to have faith. Now, don't, don't shut your faith down. Faith, faith is easy. Faith, now remember this, faith is simple. Because Hebrews 11.1 1 makes it real simple, right? It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence things not seen. You all know this stuff. Elders retained by a good report. We understand faith. We got to have faith. But here's the thing. This is what faith does. This is how faith works. Faith accepts what it hears to be truth. That's what you got to work on. Faith, see, here's the thing. Don't get into reason. Faith accepts what it hears to be the truth. That's why, you gotta, that's why what you hear, you got to believe to be the truth. Don't argue with it. Don't get in your head. I don't know nobody. I don't care who you know. You know what I'm saying? You start talking about blessing, people start getting weird. Well, how am I going to get blessed? Don't worry about how you're going to get blessed. You understand? Just know if God said it, don't disqualify it. Because you can't get in a natural reason like, how's the blessing? Be quiet. I don't know how the blessing is going to come on you. I don't care. It's going to come on you. That's what God said. That's what you start doing. You start undoing what God did. You get all weird with it. You know, like sometimes like, how could God? God could do whatever God wants to do. You, are you with me? So don't, 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 don't despise what I'm telling you because you're looking at your bank account. I don't care about your bank account. I don't care about none of this stuff. I don't care about that. The blessing will make it rich and add it no sorrow. That's what the Bible said. You got to get it to understand. Whole gospel was all about getting this stuff back on you. That's what it's about. Because God, let me tell you something about God. When God made man and formed man in the image and made him in the likeness of God and put him in there and blessed him, God didn't want that blessing to leave. Man jacked that up. So here's the thing. God just wants you to go back to that Eden-like condition because he loves you. Well, you say, well, I'm in the earth. The earth's cursed. Yeah, I know, but you're the blessing that's keeping this. You realize the only reason why the earth's still doing what it's doing is because you're here and you're keeping the blessing in the earth. And until time's up, the blessing's here. As long as the blessing is here, guess what? You're the blessed one. Are you cool with that? So because you're here, the earth's still hanging on. We're the hope of the world. I'm not in a hurry to get out of here, though, because all these lost people are going to go to hell. I'm telling you, listen to me. Once we leave, this place is going to hell in a handbasket. And that's why, go preach. You better be preaching the gospel. Preach the gospel to everybody. I don't care if you offend them either. They'll get over it. 
but you need to get saved. Tomorrow, no man knows the day and the hour. Maybe tomorrow we're out of here. I mean, you better tell somebody. I don't want to leave here leaving my friends behind. I'll tell them all. What are you going to do, get mad? They ain't going to get mad. They're looking for hope. They're scared of dying. Everybody you know that ain't a believer, most believers are scared of dying, and everybody you know lost is definitely scared of dying. I'm telling you God's not truth. And young people, you ain't scared of this stuff. But the older you get, you start thinking about it like, I wonder really if there is a heaven. <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Yeah, you will. And then one day you say, well, praise be to God. That's when you start fixing. You want to know why older people are smart? They're closer to going to heaven. They don't say stupid stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 133, verse 1. Ain't that good? Say, yeah, I don't know how much more days I got on the earth. I'm not walking in no offense. Young people, they say all the stupidest things in the world. They got plenty of time. That's what they think. Amen. Behold, now watch, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Now watch this. Okay. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard of Aaron. Aaron's beard that went down the skirt of his garments. Now keep going. You're going to see this. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Okay? So you got to get this, right? So you got to get this, right? How did, that, how did he get blessed? Well, Moses blessed him. When Moses blessed Aaron, that, that anointing came on him and the blessing came on him. Okay? So this is what you got to get. The minute you got born again, that blessing came on you. Now you got to get this and understand this now. Here's what happened. Why is the born again experience so awesome? The born again experience was the experience of the blessing coming back on your life. Okay? You're a new creature in Christ, never been one like you before. But Jesus redeemed you to put the blessing back on you. Are you getting this? So here's the cool part. When you came into the body, the blessing came on you. Did you get that? That's, listen to me. When you came in the body, the blessing came on you because the blessing's on him. The blessing is on Jesus because of Jesus' obedience. And the minute you came in the body, you became the body of Christ. He's the head. What the head's got, just like Aaron's beard ran down, that blessing ran down all the way. It ran down on you. Amen? So the blessing's on you. Okay? Now you say, Pastor Chris, you're all excited about the blessing. Well, guess what? If you ain't excited about the blessing, you sitting in the curse. I'm not sending no curse. People think all this stuff's like, well, you know, nothing's working. Yeah, as long as you're working in the earth, you're going to have the curse. But you ain't going to live in that curse. You're going to live in the blessing. Amen? Are you okay with that? Did you get that? Did you pull that in your spirit? Did you read Deuteronomy 28 yet? You should have by now for crying out loud. I told you three weeks ago. Read it. Did you see what he said in there? He, he got, man, I'm telling you right now, the blessing will let you get out of everything. Yeah, it will. It's a, but see, here's the thing. It, people say, well, it's the blessing. It's like, God bless you. It ain't God bless you, man. It's an empowerment of blessing is power. Okay? Did you get that? It's in doing you with power. Come on, you get that? Power and prospering in every area of your life. So wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. If I'm not prospering in an area, what's that mean? I got to get the blessing to kick in. Do you remember Deuteronomy 20? Go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Pop that up there. Let them see that. Okay? Just write these down. I know you read them, but you need to read them again. And you need to pull them in your spirit. So what he's saying is Aaron got the anointing to come on him. How did Aaron get the anointing on him? Moses put it on him. Moses anointed him. Okay? That Jesus, when you can't, now who's Jesus? He's the anointed one in his anointing. So what are you? You're in the anointed one. Does that make sense? When you, came, when you became a Christian, you became a part of the body of Christ. You stepped out of you and stepped into him. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You stepped into the glory. The new birth put you in his body, baptized with him in death, rose with him in resurrection. You seeing it? That's you. Now, why is that awesome? That's awesome because when I got in him, I got in the blessing. Now, now watch this. Your superiority complex is coming because of whose I am. I'm his and he's yours. We're one in spirit. So now I'm like, I'm just taking my place. I'm stay- Want to know what the church needs to do? Just stay in him. Stay in it. Well, how do you stay in him? By faith. It's going to take faith mixed with the message. That's why you got to fight for it because it's a fight of faith. That's the only fight you got. And the biggest fight you got is the confession of your mouth. You got that? Because it keeps you connected. Look what it says. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments. That's why now you're a word walker. This is why you stay in the word. Let me tell you this goody two-shoe Christianity is nonsense. 
You don't understand what I mean by that? Well, I'm going to be good. No, it ain't about no being good. It's about being obedient. And when you're obedient, guess what you do? You stay connected to the blessing. That's why I got to stay close. That's why I ain't getting offended. Hello? You get offended, you're going to step out of the blessing. It costs me too much to stay out of this thing. I'm not going to get mad. You know what I'm saying? What happens when you get mad? You ever think of that? Joseph should have got mad as a hornet. But he didn't get mad. Why? He knew, man, you start getting, you start getting offended and you start getting messed up, what will happen? You'll step out of that blessing. This blessing is going to follow you. Look what he says here. Look at And now, what, now God says, which I command thee this day, to observe and do all the commandments which the Lord commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Now, I don't know if you read. See, I don't think most people believe the Bible. If he said it to Abraham, he's saying it to you. If he's saying it, are you not to see to Abraham? Are you getting this? Look, if you ain't figured this out by now, it's okay. That's why I'm here. You don't think he's talking to you? So I know some of you are like, that's the Old Testament. He's talking to Abraham. You are the Abraham of today. You are the seed. You understand what I'm saying? That blessing's on you. If he said it to Abraham, it's just, I'm the seed of Abraham. I'm an heir. Amen. Did you get that? So this is on me. Well, why don't we see it? We don't got a revelation of it. The church don't get this. They could get it. It's a mystery. That's what makes you so humble towards God. God, why are you showing me this? Because he wants us to be blessed. But once you get it, you got power, man. I'm telling you what. Because you know your place. You're taking your place. And your place is going to give you, it's going to make you superior over circumstances. And you're going to walk around with an edge. You're going to walk around with an edge you didn't have a month ago. I'm not tolerating that. You're going to look at Lack and say, Lack, you better shut up and get out of here. You know who this is? I'm the blessed. That ain't going to work. Sick don't work. That ain't part of the package. I don't care. And then you got to get to the point you got to get all in. See, some of you still relying on yourself. You got to quit. Quit relying on you. How in the world am I going to get me out of this? I'm done. I surrendered. Now, let me write this down. You need to surrender to the blessing. I've been on the phone talking to people from all over the world. I was telling them, and the one guy asked me, well, how do you get it? I said, you surrender to it. That's the problem with the church. We try to manufacture it. Just surrender to it. You can't manufacture this thing. You got to just surrender. I just submit myself to it. Just keep thinking about it. Get up in the morning and think about the blessing. I'm telling you, think about the blessing. And once you start doing it, it'll start kicking the gear like, hey, no, I'm not living with that. That ain't part of the blessing package. That don't go with this. Are you pulling this in? Now get this thing. Now watch what he said. Set thee on high. The Lord, the people watch all over. You know, people watching from all over the place, they watch this thing. It's amazing to me. And people are like, they're catching it. It's for the whole house and every partner we got. I'm telling you right now, you, I wouldn't get off this thing until we get it. I'm going to drain it. And if you're a member and you're a partner, you better just listen to find stuff about it. Just go study some stuff and get in there and say, what's the thing, man? I got to read about this. I've been pastors talking about this. And I'm telling you now, believe what I tell you because I ain't a went one. I'm a sent one. I ain't a went. I'm sent. I'm sent on assignment to you with a word that you ain't even got. You know what, the, what I said? Today was good. It's got to be in somebody for you to get it. Otherwise, you can't get it. It's just pablum. It's pablum. Listen, baby. You, you go to sermons.com. You got people ready. Preach, I'll start preaching somebody else's sermon. God bless them. I could care less. I ain't no preaching no other somebody's sermon thing. That ain't the, what God built this on. He said, I'm putting a word. I pulled it in me. I pulled it. I, I, I said, say it. I said, say it. I knew what I was on assignment. I said, say something. I'm one instruction away from changing the world. You're one instruction away from changing your life. People running away from instruction. I'm running and trying to find it. Say something. Blessed. I said, man, I'm pulling that thing. It hit me. Boom. I said, man, you're talking about Abraham. You're talking about Abraham. You're talking about Abraham. And then God said, it's in the birthright. You were born into the blessing. You've been born into royalty. You've been born into this thing. You ain't got to stop. You got to stop seeing you the way you think you are and start seeing you the way I made you to be. I don't care what you know. You got to know what I know. That's what God was saying. I said, God, what you are? He said, you bring it back. You release it. I'm releasing it in the atmosphere that the blessing of God. I don't care. 20 years of screwing up, you can undo it in one act of obedience. Where I came from, I care less where you came from. That ain't mean. So they're like, well, I'm a woman, or I'm this. I don't care if you're polka dot and you glow in the dark. You understand me? The blessing of God is on you. It's going to prosper you. Look what he said. And I'll set thee on high. You stand there and say, set me on high above all the earth, God. All the nations of the earth. That's your idea. Man, you know what? If he didn't want you, he should have left you alone. He picked you. You know what's crazy about this? You ever think about some, you know, adopted people? Maybe some of you adopted. 
Anybody adopting? You adopted people. I, I don't ever get a complex. You were picked. My mom and daddy got stuck with what they got. I come out and say, hey, you like it or not, he's yours. She wasn't like, put him back. So, you know, that's what you get. Adopted people, you're really special. They picked you up out of a lineup. You're more special than the people that came out. You ever thought of that, did you? Adopted people like, ah, no, I don't know. Nobody, somebody adopted me. They picked you up out of a lineup. They had a rap sheet on you. You know what I mean? Little Johnny, he was this. He was teasing too long. Look, I'm telling you. You know what's cool about that? Jesus said, we've been adopted. Hey, hey, he seen me jacked up. Pick me anyway. He seen me shot out. He picked me anyway. He seen me messed up. He seen me cussing. He picked me anyway. He seen me yelling. He picked me anyway. He seen you jacked up and picked you anyway. Don't disqualify you. He picked you. Come on. Some of you, he picked you really ripe. You were like 50 some odd years old. He's still all jacked up mess you were. Come on, right? Come on, imagine that. 50 years of your stinking performance and God still picked you. Woo! You're like a puppy that is way too long in the cage. He's come and got you. Come on. You're, don't, don't. Wait, you disqualifying what God qualified. Wow, Bob, you know why? I'm, be quiet. Don't believe what you want to believe about you. Believe what I'm telling you about you. Man, you're going to, I'm blessed. Man, your business, that's what I'm going to get with all the business people. All you business people, I got three meetings set up to meet with you. And the business people that want to be business people, I'm done waiting. I'm driving. I don't care if three of you show up. You're going to make so much money, your head's going to spin. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I talked to God today. I said, you know what? He's probably watching. I said, if $8 million deal goes down and that's in your hands, it's in God's hands. It goes into the earth, God don't get nothing. You don't think God wants you to have money? God wants you to have more money than you ever, your head will spend so much money. Because God knows if you got it, he got it. That's why he wants to pull it out of the earth. It's cursed. It doesn't produce. He wants to put it in the kingdom. I tried to, I tried to sell something. Now, no, don't you pick what, don't you do what I do, because it ain't none of your business what I do. <laughs> I got something. Somebody gave me something. I li- it was all right. I didn't really like it. And then other stuff I got, I liked. But the one thing I got, it was like, all right, it was expensive. It was a very nice gift. But I was like, eh, you know, I could sell it and get what I want. And I swear to, I'm telling you, man, I don't like to say that, but I swear to you, in the name of Jesus, I turned the corner, and the minute I said, um, and you could, don't, don't get stupid, just listen to me, all right? Because I know some of you are going to like, oh, my God, we shouldn't do it. You do what God tells you. But he said, he said these words to me. He said, don't, don't, don't you sell it, you sow it. Because the minute you sell it, it comes out of my kingdom. I said, what? What? He said, if you sell it, if you sell it, it's going to leave the kingdom of seed time and harvest and sowing and reaping and going to a place of wealth transfer. And this is something that's out of wealth transfer, and it's in sow and reap. You know what I'm saying? So if I said, hey, you want this? It was like three grand or whatever it was. And I said, all right, you know what? I would have been like, give me 1500 bucks. God bless you. I get what I want and go my way. Now it's bought in usury. It's no more seed. You took it out of the kingdom of sow and reap, and you put it in the usury of money exchange. God said, don't take it out of my kingdom. I never heard it like that, Paul. I said, okay, I got it. So what you're saying is because it came in the kingdom, leave it in the kingdom. What's it going to look like when the corporation comes to you, even if i got to use money to buy it, but now it's a kingdom thing? Oh, you need a business? Here you go. My God in heaven. That's what God wants. God doesn't want wealth out of gain, out of this and that. God wants you to get it, but I see time and harvest. You sow for it. That's why God ain't got no problem for the dream because whenever God talks to you about a dream in the future, he talks to you about a seed. You sow to get it. You see what I'm saying? So what's that? It's in the kingdom. So there's wealth in the earth that God wants in the kingdom. He ain't got no problem. He wants it to transfer over. That's why the last season of transfer is going to come. You know what I'm saying? Wealth transfer. You with me? Because God wants it back in the blessing so he can go evangelize the world. All right? That's why you're going to get favor from lost people. Lost people are going to give you favor. They ain't even going to know why. They're going to give you jobs and not know why they're even giving you jobs. Like, I don't know. I like you. I like you too, but the blessing's on you. It's a puller. It's a magnet. You understand this? I don't know why. I just want to give you this. Just take it. But you leave things in the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? Things that are in the kingdom, you still keep them in the kingdom. Why? Because God wants the blessing to come on you. That's part of the blessing. And make us rich and add no sorrow. You looking at verse 2? Did you get that? So what am I trying to tell you? God's got a kingdom within. Caleb and Joshua have seen it. Everybody else couldn't see nothing, but Caleb and Joshua have seen it. Did you get that? Did you get that? 
they seen it. What they see? They seen the land flowing with milk and honey. These other nitwits didn't see nothing but giants. Remember I told you Sunday? Remember Sunday? What were they supposed to do? They weren't supposed to go there and spy out the land and come back with an evil report. They were supposed to go there and say, oh, that's that Eden condition we've been talking about. Let's go take the land. These nitwits came back with an evil report. God said, you're doomed, and now you're all going to die outside the promised land because of unbelief. you got to have faith. It takes one thing, faith in the message, to change your life, okay? Look, let's go over there. And all these blessings shall come on thee. And our, oh, look, at it. look, 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 look. All these blessings shall come on thee and what? Overtake means you can't handle it. To overtake you. Don't mess with this. Just agree with it. God said overtake, let it overtake. If you are, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Watch this, three, the commanded blessing. This will mess you up. And blessed thou shalt be in this city, and blessed thou shalt be in the field. And he goes right on down the line. But watch, I'm just going to read a couple verses. Keep going. What? Blessed be the fruit of the womb and fruit of the body and fruit of the ground and fruit of thine increase and fruit of everything you got. Everything's prospering. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Blessed shall be thy basket in thy store. Keep going. Watch this. Blessed thou be when thou come and blessed thou be when thou goes. Keep going. Keep going. Watch this. And the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They come in one way, but they flee in seven. Now watch this. Here you go. Go this way. Woo-hoo-hoo. But get this. And the Lord shall command. That command put the earth in motion. Light be. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in the storehouse. And in all that thou settest thy hand to do. Everything you do, God's going to. You're going to rise to the top. Because of the blessing. And what? And he shall bless thee in the land he gave you. Everything you put your hand to is going to be blessed. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you. And everything you set your hand to do, he's going to bless it. My God in heaven, you go to work tomorrow, walk in that shop. God's blessing's here. You walk in that office, the blessing of God's here. So I was speaking the blessing of God over everything. Your numbers will go up. I'm telling you right now. Why not? You shouldn't have told me. He got it. See, here's the thing. He's giving us a revelation. You don't, get, you, don't, you don't get access to what you do not have revelation of. But God gave us revelation. If we got revelation, he gave us access. So take it. you will be crazy to sit here and not take this. I'd run with it. I'm running with it now. Now you're running with it. Now watch this, okay? You ready to get some stuff? Here we go, right? Watch this. You ready for this? Now you got to get this. Well, how do I get this to work? Number one, I got to get a superiority complex. Write it down. If you didn't write it down, I got to get this. I'm, I'm above this. I ain't living beneath. I'm above and not beneath. Look at Genesis 25, you all right? I'm going to keep you for a little bit. I'll keep you the quarter after, then we got to go. All right? But you got to get this, okay? Genesis 25. And Abraham, 25, verse 5. And Abraham, this is a good part, man, Genesis 25, 5. You feel it in here? You're growing in it, right? You're growing in faith for this? Everybody say this out loud. Say, I'm growing in faith for the power of the blessing to work in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's transferable. Look at this, right? Look at verse 5. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. He passed it on. He passed it on. Do you get this? It comes on you. Now, it's important to understand how. Because you don't understand the how, sometimes you don't get the why's. Now, watch this. I want you to get this. He, what do you mean he gave it to him? He blessed him. Now, check this out. Keep going. Look at, Gen- look at Genesis 25, 29. Okay? Now, here's the thing you got to be careful of. This is the story of Esau. You all right with this? Okay? Now, where'd the blessing go? And Abraham gave everything he had to Isaac. Are you with me? So Abraham, Isaac. Now, watch this. Should have been Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But Jacob got there. You seen it? It came down. This is why it's important to understand. It's the blessing of Abraham was the what? It was the rebirth of the blessing in the earth. Remember I told you in Hebrews chapter 2, Jesus said, I am the seed of Abraham. My God in heaven, if that don't mess you up, what you mean he's the seed of Abraham? I thought he came from God. Are you here? What do you mean the seed of Abraham? You ever think of that? If you didn't, you better start. He said, I became the seed of man. We understand that, but what did you say you became the seed of Abraham? Because the blessing that was on Abraham came on me. Bro, what? You were, why in the world? How, wait a minute, man, I'm so shot out. 
you, 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 you took the blessing to Abraham? Yeah, I took the blessing to Abraham. That's, that's how I got the curse off the earth because I became the sacrifice to keep the blessing going through. That's why Job went through that hell. Keep the blessing going through. Joseph went through all that hell. Keep the blessing. So they, well, I'm going through a Joseph season. No, you're going to keep the blessing on your life. You better believe it's good. That's the only reason why Job went through all that hell. What does his wife tell him to do? Curse God and walk away. I don't curse no God and walk away, you silly girl. His goofy friends. Are you with me? Keep the blessing. Joseph, keep the blessing. Joseph got sold into slavery. Hello? You want to know what's really messed up? Now, let me tell you something here. God knows every, look at me, look at me, look at me. God knows every problem that's going to arise next year and has already planned a plan to get you out. God knew them little brothers of his were going to throw him in a pit. God had a caravan a month before, get on the road trip. Hey! Hey! You ain't paying attention to me. You get what I just said? You get what I said? God knew them little joker brothers he had got mad because daddy put a coat on them, a special coat. You got a coat on you. You understand that? You got a special coat on you. You understand that? Remember I told you I got that thing? You got to choose to be chosen. He got a coat of many, many colors. He blessed. Got a coat on him. His brother got all mad. He said, I had a dream. Everybody's worshiping me. <laughs> right? Everybody said, get mad at the dream killer. You know what? The brothers were stupid. They shouldn't have got jealous. But jealous is based on hatred. Okay? And you all know the story, right? And little, little Joseph, I had a dream. His own daddy got weird. Whatever, man. I could care less. You with me? You here? He got a little coat on him. Remember, they, they took him out and said, let's kill the jerk. Right? Y'all know the story. Reuben saved him. He's, he's a wheeler dealer. He tried to sell him. And a band of Ishmaelites. Remember I told you that? They come to get him. You want to know what? You think that band just, just decided one day to go on a road trip? And be at the perfect time, at the perfect spot, getting a little promise out of the pit. Woo! Somebody pr- write that down. When the promise got out of the pit. Woo-hoo! Hey! Somebody preach that. When the promise got out of the pit. You don't think God? You don't think God knew that little promise was going to be in that pit? His brothers want to kill him. That's what they said, Daniel. They said, nah, kill him. They said, nah, man. Reuben woke up. He said, man, what good is killing the joker? We can't get no money for him if we kill him. This is like extortion 101 back in the day, right? They're like... Don't kill him, sell him. They thought, hey, that's a good idea. At least we could get a couple of bucks for him. And then we go back and tell daddy he's dead. They took that little color and put blood stain of an animal on and said he's dead. And he was heartbroken. Heartbroken. Remember the whole story? Joseph come back around later on. And remember his brothers, he, they, when they found out it was him, they were like, oh, my God, he's going to kill us. But he was merciful because he understood. The process kept the blessing in the earth. But here's what I got news for you. You don't think God knows the pits that might be waiting for you this year? He's already got the caravan moving. Say, get moving. Them jokers got moving months before to be at the right time, at the right place, to get the promise out of the pit. Come on, somebody. And I got news for you. Whatever comes this year, the blessing's going before you. And when you fall in the pit, the promise's going to pick you up. It's going to get you out. You just start laughing. Instead of getting mad, you laugh. Ha, 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 ha. The blessed guy here. No, you ain't getting me. You can't get me. You can't get me. The blessing's gone. You, remember, come on, guys. Kill them. You can't kill them. They thought they were smart. You can't kill the blessing. You can't kill it. They couldn't kill him if they wanted to kill They couldn't kill Jesus. They couldn't kill him. And they can't kill you. You understand me? The devil's a nitwit. I'm going to kill you. You ain't going to do jack. I know I'm blessed. You better run out the way, bro. Now, he can kill the people that don't know nothing. Come to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll destroy you. You don't know about the blessing. You put a blessing bloodline around your house. This house is blessed. My business is blessed. My bank account is blessed. I don't care. The whole earth go under. My blessing's going to rise up. Why? Because before the foundation of the earth, God put the blessing on you. He put it on you. What do you mean? He empower you to prosper in everything you do. It's not, you understand when I say that? You understand when I say that? Blessed. Baruch. How do they say it right? Baruch. I'm Jewish today. <laughs> Baruch, I empowered you with the blessing to prosper. You understand that? Be blessed. He didn't say be blessed. He said this, be empowered to prosper everywhere you go. And turn the dirt because the blessing's on you. Yeah. 
Make it like Eden. Eden was supposed to grow. See, people don't realize it. They thought Eden was just like the paradise that was supposed to stay. That garden was supposed to grow up out of there and take over the whole earth. We were going to live in Eden. You understand that? That's why we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. You understand that? You see what I'm saying? That blessing is supposed to go. How you get it? You see, he said, I gave you herb-bearing seed. He said, you just plant and grow and plant and grow, and the prosperity will just overtake you. Adam's a nitwit. Total nitwit. Yeah, he don't know what he's doing. I don't know what that joker was doing. Wasn't paying attention to God. We get up there in heaven, we smack him in the head. I'm being honest. Like, what were you thinking, dude? He, told, he sold us out. You know what the Bible said? Cursed is the earth because of you. <sighs> I feel sorry for him. Right? Cursed, for, cursed, cursed, cursed is the earth because of you. My God in heaven. I don't even know if he's saved. I, I'll tell you right, right now. I don't know if he is. I don't know. I'm not going to argue with it, but I don't know how you know. I ain't going there. Right? So check it out. Cursed is the earth because of your disobedience. One man's disobedience brought sin into the world, but another man's obedience. Why do you think, why do you think we've been calling Jesus the second Adam all this time? It goes slow because I get a lot of weight in here, and then I think like, you know, he, they call Jesus the second Adam. Well, doesn't that seem disrespectful? Just hear it, though. If you think, right? Why don't they say the king that redeemed? You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that sounds weird. What do you mean the second Adam? First Adam's a jack, messed up mess. He said, no, I'm the second Adam. You got to get this now. He said, Adam, he made them, he said he made them what? Male and female, but go slow, but he put them in Adam. The human race was in Adam. Do you get this? So everybody on the face of the earth was Adam because there was a race of mankind with the blessing. You get it? Now Adam messes up. Now we're all cursed, and the human race is destroyed because of his sin. So Jesus comes as the second Adam, the second coming of man. Woohoo! You ever hear that before? Second coming of man. What you mean? First man's jacked up. God, God was broken hearted. He even made man. He flooded the earth and got rid of half of them. All of them besides eight. Okay, I'm throwing weight. And when I throw weight, I got to go slow. Okay? No problem. This is why we're here. This is why you go to church on Wednesday night. Be like, oh, I can't go to church. Go to church. This is where you learn. This is important. Now, this ain't no stupid stuff I'm telling you, like talking about nonsense. I'm talking to you about important stuff. Why is he the second Adam? He is the, he is the second Adam because he is the new man. You understand that? So the first man died in death. We all born in death. This guy's lineage is leading us to life in peace. But now watch. This will blow you out. Abraham, this is crazy. How in the world did Jesus take the seed of Abraham when he's the one that went to the cross and got us back and got the curse off of us? Because Abraham was the seed of man when he was over here and believed God unto righteousness. He was the new seed of man. You understand this? So now you get to hear an Abraham's obedience. Hello? Abraham's the first guy. Now look, at where, where did Abraham get it from? Noah had it on him. When man was doomed, there was only one guy that was carrying it. You understand it? It was on Adam, got off of Adam. You want to know what's crazy? Now check this out. But where did it go after Adam? Come on. Noah. But watch this. You think about Cain and Abel. One was righteous, one was unrighteous. What did God do when he brought an unrighteous sacrifice to God? He said, I don't accept it because you know how to serve me. And the blessing ain't going to be on you. Come on now. You see it? It came in through the line. Okay? It got lost. Came in through the blessing. Okay? Now go slow. Don't, don't hurt your head. Noah's got it on him. Shem took it on him. Shem took it and carried it over. Now we come over here. Isaac got it on him. What do you mean? It kept going from lineage to lineage because we had to get it to the cross. So now why is Abraham becoming that? Because Abraham's the man of faith to believe God to being what? The redeemer of man, Jesus, into the earth. How in the world is this? this is nuts. So G, G, Abraham believes, it's faith stuff. Abraham believes God over here, gets credited righteousness for what Jesus is going to do over there. He becomes the seed of the new man over here, and then Jesus said, I came in, and I'm the seed of Abraham. You're the seed of the promise that you were the one that got us from, yeah, it's all faith. So I went up, on, I took on, the, I didn't take on the form of an angel, but I took on the form of a man. The seed of Abraham was the seed of the new man. Okay, watch this. What happens when you become born again? You become a new man. The old man's dead. How would you become a new man? The Adam is dead, and the Jesus is alive. You in the body of Christ, 
but you were in the blessing of Abraham because Abraham believed God and was credited to righteousness. You understand that? This is just as much the blessing of Jesus as the blessing of Abraham, but God had to find a man named Abraham that believed him to become an heir of all of mankind. You became an heir of the world. You are an heir of the world, man. You understand what I'm saying to you? You ain't some groveling little baby Christian scrapping for scrapes. You are an heir of the world. The earth is yours. God said, I put my throne in heaven and I put my feet up on the earth like a footstool. I put my feet on it like an otterman and I have dominion over it. And that's what he said in Genesis 1. I give you dominion. Stop tolerating not enough. Your days of lack are over. I'm telling you, you put the blessing in there, it'll prosper. Isaac took the blessing in the middle of the famine for crying out loud and flipped the dirt. He said, put the seed there. In the famine, he said, I'll flip it and got a hundredfold return. How'd you do that? The blessing did it. I knew Jack. Is the demographic right? Pff, I don't care. Is this right? I don't care. He said, put the blessing in the earth and watch the earth. The earth knows what to do with it. The dirt will know what to do. It will respond to the blessing, even though it's cursed. You want to know what he did? He superseded the laws of the earth. You know why? Because the blessing overrides it. The blessing overrides the curse. You see it? You see it? The blessing overrides the curse. Now, the curse is going to try to say it's yours. No, I say, no, 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 I ain't taking that mess. The blessing overrides it. The blessing overrides it. The blessing overrides it. It overrides it. All right, watch, 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 watch. You understand? I know some of you are like, well, how come it ain't working in my life? You ain't got no faith for it. The more faith you put in what I'm telling you, the more it's going to manifest. Did you get what I said? The more faith you put in what I'm telling you, the more it's going to manifest. And that's what happens. You got to get around somebody that's got it in them. And when it's in them, it becomes your revelation. You'll, you'll feel it in you. You'll feel like something happened to me. Something happened to me. I don't know what happened. You just keep talking. I mean, something happened to me. Because I got faith for what you're saying about me. Something happened to me. So I shifted. I went in another dimension. How would you do that? Revelation. You okay with that? So just say it. Now watch this. Watch it. So a a Abraham gave it to Isaac, and Isaac right here gave it to Jacob. Let's just read this one part, okay? You all right with this? In 25? Now I got to get this, right? 25, 29? Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. And Jacob, right? And Isaac loved Esau because it was, he was dear to him, right? And he, he wanted some food. And Esau came from the field. And he was faint. And Esau said, Jacob, feed me. And he said, I pray thee with the same pottage. I'm faint. And he said this. He said, w -w 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 what was his name? He said, Edom. And Jacob said, you sell me your birthright. Now, his mama prepped him up for this. Because she knew. Ma she, she knew. She said, your daddy's getting ready to go release the blessing. And I needed to get on you and not your brother. And they put a little, they put a little humdinger on him. You know, they worked it out where you come in and look like your brother. And you know what I mean? You act like your brother, smell like your brother, cook like your brother, you get your brother's blessing. And he was a thief. That's why he was jacked up. And I told you about that. That's why, remember when, I can prove every story in the Bible is pretty much about the blessing or close to it. I can show you how. Because you want to know why G Jacob wrestled with God? Because he was wrestling with his identity because he stole the blessing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and what did he do? He had to get his name changed because the joker had a wrong identity because he sees himself as a supplanter because it is. You want to know what's nuts? You want to know what's really nuts? You want to see something really nuts? It's really crazy. That's why when he was serving Laban, it was all messed up. Hear me now, because he didn't understand. He had something on him, but he didn't understand it. Because it, it wasn't working the way it could have worked because he stole it. Until, until he shows up with God and wrestles with God, because he didn't have to wrestle with God. He was wrestling with himself. Because his identity was screwed up, because he knew something was great about his life, but couldn't, he couldn't figure out how to work it until he met God face to face. And remember when he wrestles with God? And he said, he wrestling all night long, and he toiled, and he said, his hip went out of joint, and he went to God, he said, this. he said, who are you? He said, I'm Jacob. I'm a liar, cheater, healer, stealer, birthright, supplanter. He said, no, you're Israel. And there's a blessing on your life, kid. And then he said, what? He said, who are you? He said, now I'll bless you. See, he had it on him, but he didn't understand it. It's been on you since birth. You just don't understand how to work it. You better hear me, church. It's been on you since you came born again. You just don't know what you got, kid. Look at me and understand what I'm saying. It's been on you since you got born again, but maybe you didn't understand it the way we understand it now. It's okay. It's only been working in part. It's getting ready to kick in gear in full motion because you got a revelation of where you're supposed to be, and it's lifting me up and showing me who I really am, and I'm not tolerating what I used to tolerate because I know where I come from. I got it now. 
And when he said, I'm done, he come out and said, I'm Israel. I'm Israel. What do you mean you're Israel? And he, you know what he called that place? Penny, he said, this is the place I met God face to face. And now God has become my God. He said, it's like Bethel. I met God in the house. And I met God face to face. You know what that means? I had the exchange I needed to have. I had the exchange I needed to have. I don't see me. Because let me tell you, as long as you see you the way you see you, you cannot manifest where God sees you. You got to stop seeing you like you. Because you ain't you. God changing your name anyway. The book of Revelation says we'll see your real name when we get to heaven. We don't even know what to call you yet. Just call me. And I hope my God my name's blessed. I show up and they say, hey, blessed you're here. I said, praise God. I've been waiting for this day. Do you understand me? Don't believe what your head tells you and don't believe what you heard. Believe what I'm telling you. Everything I'm telling you is scripturally right. Okay? So he, now let me tell you what happened. You don't walk away from it for pressure. You can play because I want to be sensitive to this because the kids got school and all. I, I gave a couple weeks I had more time, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, we got to be sensitive. Dude, this is a lot too. You can't just download all this on you, amen? I preach all night long though, you know that. Everybody say, hey, praise God. Amen. I know it's not midnight. I'm not Paul neither, right? <laughs> and Jacob, right? Look at this, right? Now watch this. And Jacob said, sell me this day of my birthright, verse 32. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit is this birthright doing me? See that? 32. He didn't, he despised it. Now I'm going to say something here. He came back later in Hebrews and begged to get it back, couldn't get it. I don't think he understood what was on him, and he walked away from it not knowing because he was ignorant. Did you get what I said? Now, you could, this is where it hurts. What's the big deal? Now, let me tell you something. Write this down. The Lord said this to me. He said, pressure will stop them from staying in the blessing. Most people quit on the God stuff because it's so hard in their own natural mind that they say, man, it's a lot. Let me just forfeit it. You think about people, right? When the pressure gets so deep, what do they do? I don't want to go. I can't even fight for this no more. I quit. And they just leave the blessing. The Lord showed me that. That's what people do. They leave the blessing and walk away from the things of God because it seems like it's so hard to stand strong in the times of temptation. And they want to go take it easy. You got you to fight the fight of faith. You got to contend for the blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever notice that? Like, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, if you stay in there, man, I'm so tired of fighting for this stuff. And they quit. They pack it in. That's what he was saying. I was ready to die. You ain't going to die, you little wimp. He wasn't going to die. He didn't die. He just had a rough time. Don't let pressure talk you out of this. You understand that? Don't let circumstances and pressure talk you out of this. Just stay strong. Just say, hang on. Go, hey, the blessing's kicking in. The blessing's going to kick in. Stay in there and tell the devil, shut your face. Shut your mouth. You tell him, just shut up. And listen to you, nitwit. You know what I'm saying? Because pressure's coming. That's what they do. You ever notice this? Everybody in this church can think about somebody that said, well, you know, they really just quit on their blessing. They don't want to stand no more. It takes too much to stand. Stand anyway. Now watch this. You ready for this? Check this out. And he said, sell me, sell me your birthright. Here's the key, right? And then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and lentils, and he didn't eat. And he, he, now watch this. Esau despised his birthright. Here's what it is. Ready? He, what did he do? He didn't value it. He didn't value it, guys. Does that, you get that? You can go on and say, he didn't value it. Are you okay with that? He didn't value it. And if you don't value it, you ain't going to walk in it. Now you got to put faith in it. Go to Galatians 3, 14, and we're going. You ready for this? Now you got to get this. Because everybody says it's going to take faith. You got to have faith for it. Now you say, well, what's the difference between this and everything else? I'm telling you, this is the power. You don't, now here's the thing. You don't, this, you've been working too hard. It, it's connected to grace. The blessing is connected to grace because there's no toil. You don't do nothing. You just accept it. I'm telling you, the word for 2019 is this. The blessings in your birthright, now surrender to the blessing. You got to surrender. Because you want to do stuff all the time. Just say, ah, no, whatever. I just surrender. I surrender. I let it overtake me. Just let it overtake you. Is that making no sense? Watch this. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through. You got to have faith in the message. See, you got to have faith for it. Look at the next thing. Watch 15. Brethren, I speak not after the matter of man, but though a man's covenant, it's confirmed you can't add her to. This is a faith deal. You understand that? It's a law. It's a contract. So I got to have faith that God's going to do his part. If I do my part, your part, just believe. Okay? Look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. Um, yeah, your promise is made. Go up. That's 16. You're doing good. 
But go up to 13. Just so you say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse first, for it is written, cursed everyone that hangeth on a. We've been there, right? Been there, right? You see it, right? Curse everyone hanging on a tree. Jesus hung out. Who's the only one hung on a tree for me? He took my spot. I took his part. How did we get in here? We're all in Abraham. And because we're all in Abraham, now we're all in Christ. Because when Jesus went and paid the price, because he stood three days on the earth, brought the blessing back on us. You seeing it? Look at the last verse. Look at 329. You got this? Then we're going to go. You got to have faith. You just got to have faith. Now just keep faith in the message. Look, look at I think it's 329. Look, and if you be Christ... You're Abraham's seed. And an heir, according to the promise. What's the promise? That I'm going to put the blessing on it on you through Abraham. Now, i got to get you something here. Where's the promise? Where's the promise? you got a book full of promises sitting in your lap. They're yes and amen to you. You understand that? So where's the power? It's in the blessing. You remember that? At not as the seed. You remember? Not as the seeds as many, but the one seed, the Christ. That's the promise in you. Christ in you to hope of glory. So now what? If you be Christ, are you Christ? Jesus is saying this. Are you Christ? And if you are Christ, then you're what? You're Abraham's seed. You see this? You see this? You see what I'm saying? Jesus, I thought we in you. We are in you because of what Abraham did. We're the seed. I took the seed of Abraham on me. It was mankind. I put mankind on me on the cross. So there could be another way in. When you got born again, you took the seed of Abraham. You got the body of Christ. See it? I know it's stretching your head. But just you understand what I'm saying? If you are Christ, you and Jesus, then you're Abraham's seed. What did Abraham do? He believed God and God accredited the promise. What was the promise? He got the blessing on him. Then the blessing kept going down. The, blessing, the day you got born again, the blessing hit you. What blessing? Eden-like condition. The problem is this. The church is dark. They don't have a revelation of it. So they just live like groveling around Christians. Now, some people got it. Now, you want to know who's the people that got it? The people you're getting mad at. Because yeah, most people get mad because it makes it rich. And when it makes rich, you go, oh, look at this stuff. Hey, hush your mouth. It's going to be evident to everybody because God's going to lift you above the earth. You know what I'm saying? That? And let God lift you up. You know what I'm saying? Take your place. If God didn't want you there, he won't put you there. And don't worry about it. Just take your blessing. Now, I don't know what that means for everybody, but I know this. That means God's picking you up. He's going to put you where the blessed people are. Amen? And you're blessed. And you're walking in the level of it, but the more faith you put in it, the more you're going to get it the more you're going to get it, okay? Okay? Stand up on your feet. Come on. You understand that? The more you're going to get it because I'm, I'm walking in the blessing. You know what I mean? Somebody said something the other day. Bless you. I said, don't say that. I mean, when you say it, I pull it. They said it, I pulled it. They said, oh, you, you be blessed. I said, yeah, that's all. I pull it. What you mean pull it? I understand it. Yeah, I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Now you got to start speaking it. Speak it. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by that? Start saying it. I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? You're blessed. Stuff gets a little funny, blessed. You know what I'm saying? Confess the word of God. Now you got to keep your confession on the word of God, but it's okay. You say, I'm blessed. I got the blessing on me. You can't curse the blessing. Remember Balaam and Balak? Their prophet, he comes and curse this guy. He said, I can't. He said, do me a favor. He said, do me a favor. He said, curse Israel. He said, you can't curse the joker. I can't. He said, I try to put it on, it won't work. He said, did God come to me and tell me he don't even do this? He said, now I'm getting messed up trying to curse him telling you. You try to jack around with it, you got to pay recompense. I'm telling you, listen to me. Remember, remember, remember on the Sermon on the Mount? We call it the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter blessed. He started to bring the blessing back on the people. He was preaching the blessing. The blessing. The blessing. Blessings out of my life. Blessings on you. Blessings the fruit of your womb. Man, that'll make you sleep good at night. Where them kids going? Can't go far. They blessed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, the protection, provision, all that stuff is in the blessing. So you hold your ground. You don't give up. Now you just stay there and say, oh, God, this is in the package. Amen? Lift your hands to heaven. Come on. God's so good, ain't he? God is so good. So lift your hands to heaven and say, thank you, Lord, for revealing unto me the blessing of God. Thank you, Lord, for changing me. Let me see it. Let me walk in it. And let me have a greater revelation of the blessing of God on my life. Open my eyes. Let me see and let me know, greater than ever before. I receive it by faith right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together. You did good. Sunday, I'm going to talk to you more about this.
I'm going to really show you how to get, you got to get the speaking side of this working and all this other stuff. So don't be, don't be like out. Stay in it, you okay? You'll be all right. Okay, so stay in this thing. Don't lose it now. You got to get in here now. If you say, I, I can't get in here, get the CD or watch or podcast, get it. You got to keep hearing it. And every week I'll give you a little more, a little more, a little more, because you're going to command the blessing. I'm telling you, you got to release the blessing. You got to get all this stuff. We're going to hardwire you around. And once you see this thing, you're going to run with it, okay? So God bless you. You're doing great. Amen. Take that and run.